It's good to be in the presence of our Lord. Amen. As we can feel His presence with our praise and worship, we can easily say that God is in our midst. And uh, before we start in our message, I just want to give a very short uh, experience that I had before. And it's all about the microfilm processing. When I was working many, many years ago in one company where the company is processing from the computer data process, from the pins, and it is going into a machine, and at the end, on the other side, it can transfer into a, they call it, microfilm film that you can see in the right side, in this side. So meaning from the computer data, it will go directly feeding in these tapes, and these real tapes will process in this machine, and the result will come into a microfilm with a very small piece. It's almost the size of, I can say, half of an inch, or one centimeter inch of this. And this is the monitor that they're using, just only to take a look at one part, and then it will lighten already the whole piece of that microfilm. This is the machine that I was working before. It was there for maybe around 30 years. But one day, that machine did not work anymore. We tried to save the machine by doing the troubleshooting, trying to find out what would be the solution to fix the problem. But I ended up giving up, saying to my boss, I can't do this anymore. Because of that, still, my boss was decided to call the manufacturer engineer to come in our place and to help us to fix the problem. But at the end, after a week of trying to fix the problem, it ended up, it didn't fix the problem. And because of that, since the company was not ready for a replacement or with a new technology, it ended up that the system that we're providing or the microfilm that we're providing is completely became out of the business of the company. I'm sure you have also your own experience or have read that if anyone is not ready, there's a tendency that we may feel the disappointment, the fear, argument, destruction, separation, and so on. When we are not ready, when things go wrong, it is very hard to accept it. In computer world, one says, the last love is with the person that has the backup. The last love is with the person that has the backup. It is true, in one of our customers, they are using their computer system for so many years without any backup. So when their computer fails, we need to change with a new one and I need to do the data entry manually for more than 300 users in the system. We need to learn that, you know, when we are not ready, when things happen, we cannot easily accept the situation if we are not ready. Now, what we need to do to be ready? What are the areas of our life that we need to be ready? Are you ready for this? What are the areas of our life that needs to be ready? Number one, be ready to control our emotions. There's a tendency in our life that when our emotion is so much, there's a tendency that it will affect us, affect us so much with the things that are happening. Emotion is a very strong feeling deriving from one's circumstances, mood, or relationship with others. It says here, in Matthew 6.25, Therefore, I tell you, 
Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like of this. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? It says here, on the second part, be ready about our physical or physically. It is noted here on the second passage that we can read directly here. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were both at a price. Therefore, honor your God with your bodies. Why it says in this part? Let me read to you. It says here, Let us keep our body healthy. When our body is healthy, our immune system is also high, and we are protected with any common diseases. And then how to make our body healthy? One is we need to avoid everything that will harm our body. What are the things that can affect our body or that may harm our body? One is lack of sleep. Eating so much unhealthy foods, drinking so much. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 5 8, do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. And sometimes oc occupy so much of your time with pro productivity, such as Facebook, YouTube, TV, computer games internet surfing, etc. Now, this is the question for each and every one of us, that how many hours that we're spending with the items that I mentioned earlier? How many times that we're giving the time doing the Facebook, YouTube, TV, computer games, internet surfing? Is it an hour? Two hours? Multiple hours? Now, how we can identify if we are doing the above so much or those things? You know how? If we can no longer do our own job well, doing our house responsibilities, have no time with the family, and no time with God by reading the Bible, watching or listening church messages, and songs and pray. If we cannot do those things anymore, then maybe we are, only, we are always using our time or we are using most of our time with some other thing. Being a follower of Jesus Christ, it is too important for us to have time with God. And to have time with God is to read the Bible, listen to His Word with His songs and by prayer. Always remember, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Secondly, in socially, 
This is number three. Be ready socially. When we say socially, what is in our mind when we talk about socially? Socially in a way that relates to society or its organization. We need to face the truth that our social activities has been changed from the time being. Have you experienced that? We're having some limitations right now. There are so many new things that we need to follow, like social distancing, caring others, protecting others, and sometimes self-isolation. Like in Italy, last Friday, they also banned the outside exercise, such as running and biking. Can you imagine that, brethren? Running and biking are already an outside activity, but now they are already banned in Italy. Which means for us, if that will happen in our country, what are the exercises that we can do if that is the case? For sure that we will be stuck in our house trying to do a different exercise within our house. And also, social gathering is also very important to know that we need also to submit to governing authorities. As it says in the Bible, here in the next slide, Romans 13, let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Brethren, as we follow the word of God, it is also important to follow what is the authority that was governed in this country, which means us being a country person or living in this country, it is too important for us to obey what it says by the authority. What you will notice that in some areas where there was some lockdown already where they're sitting, but still some people are still trying to go out from that place. And at the end, they are caught and they are like putting in the record that they are against with the authority. Let me continue in Romans chapter 13, verse 2 onward. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid for rulers. Do not bear the sword for no reason. There are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the room doer. Brethren, if we didn't follow the rules also of this world, especially with what's going on right now, there's a tendency that we may experience more problem because of our disobedience with the governing authorities. In verse 5 it says here, Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also a matter of conscience. Number four, be ready spiritually to wear the armor of God. Who amongst you knows already about the armor of God? As we go through in this last part about be ready, we cannot go in the battle for what's going on in this world without the help of our God. Do you agree with that? We cannot go in the battle for what's going on in this world without the help of our God. As the Bible says, submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
and it is in James chapter 4 verse 7. When we submit to God, then we are ready to wear the full armor of God. Let me read to you the passage in Ephesians chapter 6 verses 10 to 17. As we go through with this at the same time, we will look directly about this armor of God. Here in verse 10, it says, Finally, be strong in the Lord and His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, then we can proceed to face the devil. It is too important, brethren, that before we proceed with the next chapter, verse, which is verse 14, that as we submit to the Lord, then it's very important for us to put the full armor of God. And it will start with this, it says in verse 14, Stand firm, then with the belt of truth, and after you have done everything, it says here, buckle around your waist. When you take a look with this, we, as a follower of Jesus Christ, we are like a soldier fighting outside. But before we fight for anything or we go outside in the world, we have this, they call it, it's a buckle around your waist. This is the belt of truth that it says in verse 14. This is the first one. Aside from the buckle of truth, what is the next one that, it, that we need to wear? With the breastplate of righteousness in place. This is the breastplate with the righteousness in place. And the third one here is, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, which is this one. And the next one is, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the devil. Meaning, brethren, by having this shield of faith in our soul, then we can extinguish any flaming arrows from the evil around us. And the next one is take the helmet of salvation that will protect us to remember us that we have been saved by our God. And the last one is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. What you will notice, brethren, that in all the armors that we have here from God, most of them are protecting us, but only one that we can use to attack them, and this is the Word of God. Meaning, brethren, the Word of God is very important for each and every one of us because that will surely help us to base our word that once we encounter any trouble in life, by using the Word of God, then we can easily do the right thing in the eyes of God. We can easily protect ourselves. We can easily prevent ourselves doing bad things, which is against with the Word of God. And before we continue with that, I want you to go back first. Going, moving backward about the worry that we experience in life. You know, 
we being a Christian, one of the things that we need to consider when we face this emotional or so much emotion in our life, that emotion sometimes can affect so much in our life. And because of that effect, sometimes it can change the way we think, it can change the way we do things. So that's why the guidance of our God is very important. The first thing is, always remember, do not worry, because God is there to guide, guide us. Secondly, is be ready physically by keeping ourselves healthy. And thirdly, is be ready socially. Let us try to follow what are the things that we have seen in this world right now that the government wants us to do. Let us obey them and that is also for good. And it is also a word from God. And lastly, is be ready spiritually. Brethren, I am sure once we wear this armor of God, for sure we can easily face whatever troubles and trials that we may have in our life. Now the question is this for each and every one of us. And these questions, I'm sure that each and every one of us, we need to answer it. The question is this. Do you want to wear this armor of God? Who wants to wear the armor of God? Amen. Amen. We want to wear the armor of God. Because once we wear the armor of God, I am sure that we are more protected, that we are more safer, that we can think more, that we can decide more according to the word of God. And with that, brethren, before we wear this one, it is also important, first thing and foremost is, we need to submit ourselves to God. And with that, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Brethren, I do believe when we are in the presence of God, when we submit ourselves to our God, we can easily see that God will move in our life. God will change our life. And when God has changed our life, for sure, whatever devils around, we are sure that we are ready to face the world. We can protect those diseases as we go to God. We are not saying that we are 100% we will not get some diseases, but it will lessen our diseases the moment that we submit to our God. Now the question is this, do we want to submit ourselves to God? Amen? Amen. I do believe, brethren, when we submit ourselves to God, so many things that will change in our life. There are so many things that before we could not be able to do in front of God. But the moment that we submit with our God, we realize little by little we are following His command. Little by little uh, the direction of our life is towards the one that He wants us to do. If that is in your heart that you want to submit to our God, I encourage everyone to stand. And with that we're going to pray. Amen. If you want to uh, submit yourselves to God, let us stand and we're going to pray together. Because we believe without God in our life, we are useless. We don't know what to do. We don't have any direction. Our mind will be confused. We will be warrior. And our health will be weak. We're going to concentrate for the things that we need to do. But in the presence of our God in our life, our life will change completely. 
we can have joy, we can have peace in times of troubles or trials. But because of the love of God, we have the assurance, we have the joy that His everlasting love will continue in our midst. Do you want to feel the presence of God? Submit to our God. And we submit to our God. His Holy Spirit will come into you. And He will change you completely. From day to day of your life. That the old has gone. And the new has come. And your life will surely change. Because you submit to the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. We're going to pray. We're going to pray today. That for whatever situation right now that we have. As we pray to the Lord. He will, he will open His heaven. And we can see Him. And we can see a direction in our life. That through Him, we have the we have the hope. We have the peace. We have the comfort in our life. If you want this, let us pray. Let us pray to the Lord. Our Heavenly Father, today, as we come into your holy presence, we submit to you, O Lord God. We submit to you, O Lord God. From the bottom of our heart, we humble ourselves to you, O Lord. That you alone that we want to glorify in our life.
Lord, we're living today as we live in this place. Our heart is full of joy that only you, O oh God, that we will continue to follow wherever you bring all our God. And this is our prayer. And the people of God will say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. chapter 10 verse 8 heal the sick raise the dead cleanse lepers cast out demons you receive without paying give without pain okay don't misunderstand this verse okay when we give our tithes and offering we are not paying God for every miracle that we are about to receive okay mm -hmm. so the the reason why this verse has been given because of the grace of God. Amen. That anything can happen through the grace of God. Amen. Through the power of God, it can be happen to you whether you will give or not. But the thing is, when you give and when you submit your tithes and offering to the Lord, it is the sign of in the late, in the later in the later um, understanding, it is a sign of submission. It is the sign of obedience. You know, Satan is not afraid of your position. He's not afraid of what you have done here. He is afraid to a person who is willing to obey God. You know what happened to Job? I was reading in the, the book of Job. What happened to Job? You know, God allows Satan to penetrate his life, to distract you. He even received sicknesses. He even received failures. He even received those um, tragedies in his life because of the works of the devil. But you know what Job's done? He still submit to God. He still give what is due for God. He give worship, he give praise to God. And all of a sudden, and what happened after that? Everything that has been lost with Job, Amen. it's been returned back Amen. by God. Amen. Name anything that's lost from your life. But once you submit your life, it will bring stuff to you. Amen. There is nothing in this world that God cannot give you back. Mm. Amen. There is nothing in this world amen, that He cannot restore in your life. That's why when we give your touch and open, it is because you want to be under into His power. You are submitting into His power. You are giving back what is due to Him. Because 100% that you are receiving right now, it comes from Him and He is only asking 10% of it. And he has a promise for you of a blessing, of a protection that he will bless the sick, he will heal the sick, and he will cast out demons in your life. You know that there is a demon in your life. But sometimes you will not notice. Sometimes that you cannot cast it by your own. It can only be casted if you submit truly, fully yourself to God and you submit whatever is due to God. Amen? Amen? Are we blessed? So, May I invite everyone to please stand up. <laughs> 